you know what you should do. You should follow me on Twitter at Brahma018. Link in the description. Do it now. Hello my friends, welcome to another episode of our AC Milan series, it is episode 19 and today we begin and end the winter transfer window, it is the start of January and we are going to get right the way through to deadline day and beyond it so that we can complete this transfer window and get on with the season, a couple of bits and pieces we're expecting to do but we've got a lot of fixtures in between so this is going to be a hopefully jam-packed episode full of lots of stuff if you want to recap well first of all go and watch the uh, previous episodes that one will do you fine but then also we'll go through it here as well so we are top of the league we've got a game in hand over um empoli i do believe uh, and that is our opponent today and it is looking healthy. So we've got to keep winning, of course. That is the most important thing. And hopefully we can maintain that run today. The Cup also begins this month as well. We've got Lecce coming up in the uh, round of 16. And then next month, which will be in an episode later down the line, we do have Liverpool in the round of 16 in the Champions League. So we are still fighting our way in all competitions. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing how it pans out. So, first of all bit of transfer news we've had an offer for Suso let's have a look it is from Juventus they are offering 34.7 million and I'm going to ask for a little bit more we are going to actually go into the negotiation phase here um, and see if we can wiggle about 44 million maybe um, and that's something I'd very much prefer they've actually offered under his value I think 44 million um, you know, is achievable and uh, he has accepted it. So we'll see how negotiations go, but that would be a brilliant deal for us. Um, you know, Suso's not in our plans. He hasn't played for us barely all season. Yes, he is highly rated, but I'm just, um, you know, not not warming to him, you know, not feeling him. So 44 million for a player we don't play would be very good indeed. In terms of transfer incomings, we are having a look at certain players and I'll keep you guys updated if and when there is any news. But for now, first of all, let's sim this game against Empoli. They are, of course, low down in the league. And this is a team that we're going with today. We're going to try 3-4-1-2. And we're going to give a couple of players an opportunity. Lazal, Conti, Halilovic, Vania. Um, let's see what they can do today. Hopefully... We can get another win and retain our place at the top of the table. They are on a losing streak. So we sim this one and we do win 3-0. Mandragora, Lazao and Ante Rebic on the score sheet. So that's a very solid win. And we move on to the next game against Atalanta, which we will be playing. So welcome back, everyone. It is a day of the Atalanta game. First of all, quick message to give you. Suso has gone. He has joined Juventus for £44 million. Um, meaning that not only are we a little bit richer, but also we got rid of you know, a little bit of dead wood, someone who just wasn't quite cut um, you know, to make the team. So very, very pleased with that. Someone else who I'd look to probably ship off is Piontek. Um, at the end of the day, he just hasn't quite made the cut. He hasn't really been shown that he's good enough. And we have three other players who can play at front. We've got Leao, we've got Haaland, and we've got Rebic as well. So, you know, I think Piontek, providing we can get a good offer for him, um, could also be on his way out. Um, but apart from that, you know, we're looking good to go. So it is Atalanta today, and this is the line that we've gone with. We decided to switch to the 4-3-3. Um, and as you can see, lots of personnel changes in there. Hopefully, we can get a good result today. Of course, they are high up in the table. Um, let's have a look here. Well, it was high up last time I looked. Actually, oh, wow, they've dropped down massively, I swear. Um, you know, when I last looked at the table, they were doing decent. So they've really hit a bit of bad form at the moment, and they've gone 14. So we've got to be looking to win this game today, and hopefully uh, we can bring home another three points and, and try to extend our run at the top of the table. Paqueta. Tonali, he'll drive forward with the ball. Looks to lay it off to Chiesa. That's a great run from Haaland. And already we're in here. Haaland looks to dink it over. Poor finish. But the keeper doesn't quite get to it. And Erling Braut Haaland opens the scoring inside five minutes. Brilliant start for AC Milan. 
and it all comes from a wonderful passage of play. We exploit the space left as they're defending very wide indeed. And whilst the finish is probably not the right one, and I've got a little bit lucky there, thankfully he's got the placement on it to actually take it away from the keeper. So even though he's dinked it, um, it doesn't quite matter anyway and gets it in that far right-hand corner. Brilliant start for Milan and it is 1-0 early on. Oh, he's sent through Alejandro Gomez here. And he's very good in these situations. Save from Donnarumma. Rebound. And we're defending well enough. Oh, we're not, not well enough though, actually. He comes back in. I think it's Luis Muriel who's in the box, ready to pounce. He finds space, breaks off from the defensive line. And Atalanta, with their first real sniff in this game, have got themselves back on level terms. They're clinical. And we haven't made the most of our possession. Comes back out to him and he just whips it in. And there it is, like I say, peels off. Cuts back as a good striker does in the 18-yard box. And the defenders don't pick him up. It's a brilliant finish, actually. Disappointing from our point of view. We've had all of the game. And it's uh, level on terms. Oh, can we hit them on the break now? We're deadly in these situations. Chiesa driving forward with pace. A space in between again for Haaland to run through the centre-backs. And an opportunity to get back ahead, and he has done so. Erling Braut Haaland on the stroke of half-time. It'll literally be our time as soon as we kick off. And he's found himself that space yet again between the centre-backs. And he makes a goalkeeper pay. Makes Atalanta pay. Good ball, deadly on the counter-attack. And it's a neat finish. He's not missing that one, surely. And it's 2-1. AC Milan back in front. Haaland. Looking to lay it off. Oh, back to Haaland. We'll feed it through to Chiesa. What a brilliant goal that is. And it's 3-1 to AC Milan. Sublime passing. Really neat stuff. That is the philosophy in full place there. And look at it. Absolutely wonderful. And Haaland yet again at the heart of it. Chiesa and Haaland teaming up. And it's 3-1 now. It's a nice, neat finish from the young winger. Five goals in the league now. And it is 3-1. Oh, he's going to go over the top to Paqueta. What a goal. Oh, I thought that was going to be a wonderful goal. Oh, we got runners in behind here. And he's got Halilovic. Now, this is a good opportunity. Flicks it back. Oh, brilliant passing play. Paqueta. That's full time then. 3 1 in the end. A good, solid win. A little bit of a nervy moment when Atalanta got that solid equaliser. But we show our class, we show our quality, and uh, we also show that we have Erling Braut Harland as well, who has pretty much won us that game. And uh, we move on to the next one, a good win. So we're back, everyone. Uh, we do now have Lecce in the cup. I'm going to sim this game. One thing I quickly need to tell you is that Paqueta has messaged me, making noise about moving on. He's not happy with um, his lack of playing time. Despite the fact he did actually play the last game, he's playing today as well. Um, and, yeah, he wants to get away. So we'll see how that one goes. He did play really well last game, so I think maybe we can sneak him into matches a little bit more, but we'll see how that one goes. Now, though, we are going to sim this game against Lecce. Hopefully, we can uh, get another win. Yes, we do. 3-0 in the end. Kessier, Paqueta, and Piontek coming on off the bench uh, to secure the win. So we are through to the quarterfinal of the uh, Coppa Italia. So very pleased with that. Hopefully, we can maintain that run of form. More transfer offers in coming. An offer for Diego Lazal, 13 million from Real Betis. We're actually going to reject this one. I'm not looking to sell him on unless they offer me a ridiculous price. He is our rotation option at left back and can also play on the wing as well. And with Sousa leaving, we might need more of that. So we are going to reject that offer. We've had a loan offer for Matteo Gabbia from Feyenoord. And you know what? I am just going to accept the offer, um, see if he can grow at all. And um, finally put himself into contention because he's just not cutting it at the moment. But we'll see how that one goes. We have had a transfer offer for Paqueta. Now, 56 million from Liverpool. My assistant is saying we can ask for like 86 million. So I'm not going to ask for that much. But um, I am going to ask for a bit more, see if we can sneak more. Maybe like a, a 70 million, something around those price tags. We'll see if Liverpool can offer. Really shocked about this, to be honest. Um, because if we can get that sort of money for him, we are absolutely laughing considering, you know, his opportunities have been limited. 
Russ was 70 million, and they will offer it. So there you go. I mean, I guess, you know, he's 23, he's still going to grow, and he's 84 80. It does make sense that they're offering that sort of money, but, you know, for us, he just doesn't play that much. So, you know, if we can get 70 million for him, absolutely delighted. It will mean that we'll probably need to go out and sign a, a centre midfielder of some sort because, you know, of course, we are sort of running thin in that sort of advanced centre midfielder department. We do have Bonaventura who can play there and maybe Halilovic as well. Um, but again, their opportunities have been limited. So we'll see. We'll see how that one plays out for sure. We've still got to accept terms. So next up, we have Lazio. We're sticking with the 4-3-3. A couple of changes, as you can see. Kaleon returns to the team after he had that uh, short injury. Kept him out for a few games. So we're pleased to see him back. Him and Chiesa and Haaland. The front three, the three musketeers back up front. Halilovic is in at Cam. Of course, with the whole uh, speculation about Paqueta, we're not playing him, we're dropping from the squad. Bonaventura, meanwhile, does return to the bench. He's had limited opportunities, but he is a good player. Been unfortunate, really, so we'll see if we can sneak him back into the team at some point as well. Meanwhile, Romagnoli and Silva return as the centre-back pairing. So, let's begin this game against Lazio. They are fifth. They are looking to poach a Champions League place. Let's see if we can put a dent in those aspirations this time around. So it is half time and I'm not sure I've even got a single highlight to show you to be honest. That was strangely disappointing. We've absolutely controlled the midfield. So much move, good movement going on but the front three really not penetrating enough. Really not adding that little bit of quality that we always need. But until the, the final third it's going really well. I mean Thiago Silva has been unbelievable. Surely man of the match is performing on fire. Look at that. Yeah player ratings. He's doing brilliant but... um. No, it's a front three. As soon as it gets to them, it is breaking down. So hopefully an improvement in the second half. Well, one by Tonali there. Great interception. Chiesa's on his bike. He's spotted the run. The space. Oh, this is an opportunity. He goes for goal straight at the keeper. Tight angle. Halilovic looking for options. Chiesa, can he go one more to Haaland? Looking to go back in. Falls to Chiesa. Great opportunity. Strikes it safe from the keeper. And we do have a corner. Lazio just playing for the draw here. Not interested in trying to win the game at all. Just want to pass it around. Look at the time. Look at the time. F***ing hell, EA. Look at the time. Full time then. 1-0 in the end. The less said about that game, the better. Look at that. Five minutes of added time we played. And it was only supposed to be two. So um, that tells you all you need to know. Been really conned out of that game, that's for sure. They have one shot. Um, ignore the others because they're all crosses that were straight at the keeper. Um, they have one shot and that's it. So, uh, yeah, well done. Well done game. Absolutely fantastic. Right, now that I've got over that little rant, let's get on with uh, the month. Turns out there's a little spanner been put into the works. Um, of course, we won the round of 16 against Lecce, and the quarterfinal has been arranged two weeks later uh, against Roma. So what we're going to do, slight change of plans, rather than have deadline day, we're going to play that game instead, uh, and then deadline day will be at the start of the next episode. Therefore, it won't be too long for you guys, but there'll be enough jam-packed into each episode so that you can uh, actually enjoy it so we'll play Roma instead and deadline day will be in the next episode hopefully we can have a better time of it that time um, rather than that last horrendous thing against Lazio so now we can move on with transfer season transfer offer for Piontech everyone this is the one I have been waiting for we're going to negotiate we're going to ask for about 45 million because we've been told that we can ask for about 46 we'll go a little bit below hopefully we can just Get rid of him now, to be honest, because I'm ready for him to move on. So let's have a look what we've got here. Um, 45 million. Hopefully they'll be happy to offer that. Yes, they will. So things are moving. Paqueta could be off. Suso is off. Uh, Piontek as well could be off. So there's lots of, lots of things happening, but yet not enough in terms of incomings. But I'll let you know if there is any movement. Well, guys, this is a big day. Piontek gone, 45 million. Paqueta gone, 70 million. And Gabia out on loan as well. 
There is a lot of sales coming through at the moment. That is big money we've made, and we probably do need to start reinvesting some of it into the transfer window. So hopefully we can make some signings before the end of the world, before deadline day comes. So guys, this is the man I have identified, Danny Olmo. A lot of you will know him. He's making a lot of noise uh, currently on the circuit at Dynamo Zagreb. In this, his contract is actually running out at the end of the season. He's 22. He will soon turn 23, but it means we can buy him now. And because his contract's running out, we can get him for a, probably a reduced price than what you would have thought. So what we're going to do is uh, he's valued at 30. We're actually going to offer around 20 and see where that gets us. Uh, bearing in mind he is leaving on a free in the summer. They should probably uh, be considering accepting this sort of offer. They're asking for 42. I mean, that is insane. We're not paying that for someone um, whose contract is running out at the end of the season. We'll offer a little bit more. We'll go to 23. Still not budging. They're still not budging. Uh, we'll go to 26. And that'll be well and truly the final offer. Says we're going to take some time to think about it. So we'll see what they say when they come back. He'll be very good. Of course, four-star skill moves and weak foot. But most importantly, he's versatile. And it means that he can fit into a left wing position that we probably do need some beefing up on. But also, um, you know, his predominant position, he can play in that number 10 role, that cam. And also centre midfield as well. So we'll fit in nicely into the spaces that we do have available. Elsewhere, I'm also thinking about Pietro Pellegri as well. Now, the problem is with this is that, you know, we do have sort of two slash free strikers, but of course, Rebic will generally play in the wing. But I don't want to sign a young player if it means he's not going to get a whole lot of chances. Uh, and I really need to work out whether or not we can give him that opportunity or not. So we're going to come back to him if and when we can. Here's another one I want, guys. Alejandro Gomez, massive fan of him. 32, but he's a leader and he's an unbelievable player. Um, and he's so fun to play with on this as well. But the question is, do we want to take him away from Atalanta? I mean, he's Atalanta through and through. That guy is just the hallmark of that team uh, and that club in, in recent years. So I'm going to put it to you guys. Please, please um, let me know. Should we sign him or not? Should we sign him? Um, because it's down to you. It's down to you, basically. I would love him, but I'm not sure whether it would be right um, to take him away from Atalanta um, and if it would be realistic or not. So, like I say, I'll put it down to you guys. Let me know. And if not, we'll move on to another target. But uh, please do uh, give me an answer. So, time for the Sassuolo game. We're going to simulate this one. Let's get back to winning ways with any luck. We simulate we do. We win 4-1. Chiesa with two. Hernandez and Kessier getting onto the score sheet as well. So, that's a fairly routine win. And we've got to be very pleased with that. And we can now move on to the Roma game. So it's time to round off the episode with the Roma game. Hopefully we can advance through to the semi-finals. This is a lineup. We're resorting back to the old Christmas tree formation. Seems uh, very relevant considering the time of year that it is. Um, and this is the team. So it's pretty standard. Conti comes in this time around. He plays very well in this system. Mandragora returns to the team. Thiago Silva out. Just due to a uh, stamina issue, really. Of course, Kalion, Chiesa, Haaland, etc. The main core of the team is pretty much there. So hopefully today we can get, um, get ourselves through a place in the semi-finals. So let's begin. Well, this is the kind of match every football fan looks forward to. A lot on the line and the likelihood of a tension-packed occasion. We'll have every kick of the ball for you live on EA TV. It's Milan up against Roma. Thank you, Derry. Only eight teams left. The dynamics of the tournament at this stage, the quarterfinal, the And then there's what a run this is. Whips it into Haaland. What a start. They haven't even touched the ball straight from kickoff. Oh my word. Haaland's on the end of it, but Teo Hernandez is the one who has to take all the credit here. An incredible burst of pace. Just flies down the left wing. Haaland makes a brilliant run in the middle and gets past the defender. And that's it. <laughs> the rest is history. Only has to tap it in. Nice finish. Controlled. And what a start this is. Was not expecting that at all. 1-0. Oh, that's poor from the keeper. Haaland scuffed the shot. Oh, my word. Oh, well done, Conti. And away we can go here, capitalise 
on the counter now. Chiesa storming forward with pace. Oh, he's going to he might as well go on his own here. Save from the keeper. Can Kessier get onto the rebound? Olsen collects in the end. Oh, that's poor from Donnarumma. Straight at him. There's no power in it whatsoever. Oh, and they're going to score here, aren't they? It's a brilliant save. He makes up for it well. Oh, thank God for that. No power whatsoever. They're giving them lifelines just from the passing. Look at this. He's going to strike it. There's no stopping that, Scheiser. Could tell that one was coming, to be fair. It just opens up for him. Whenever they put their laces through it, it's usually pretty accurate. <laughs> pretty on target as well. So, yeah. Against a run of play, oh, I don't know, really. You know, there's been not really been a lot happening either way. I think we really do need to improve defensively as well. Look at the space that he's been given. Really disappointing. Comes from Kessier's side. He's got to follow him. And um, it is 1-1. Roma level. Needs, oh, that is brilliant pace shown from Chiesa. But Bellerin will have the pace on him, unfortunately. He's going to have to whip it in. And that is a horrendous ball. Over to Kessier, though. Great touch. He's take That's got to be a pen. Referee. Oh, no, no, no. He's finding loads of space. So he gets turned. Well done. And that's full time. And it's going to go through to extra time. Wow. Could have done without this, really. But we've got to go on. Might have to make a sub or two here. That's nice play. Harland. Tenali. Oh, look at that run from Rebic. He's just come on. And so he's got extra pace and power compared to the defender. Through on goal. Can he make it 2-1? Saved. Callion on the rebound. He's nodded across goal. And it's away from Roma. How have we not scored that? Kessier. Looking for a ball. Finds Haaland. Now's the opportunity. Another save from the keeper. Oh, my word. Cannot get past him. Going to whip it in. Caldara's there. He's... Oh! Mess up, though. Oh, my word. Couldn't even get my words out there. How have we not scored? We've had so many chances in extra time there. And somehow the ball hasn't gone in the net. It's still 1-1. And I can already see this trailing to penalties and I'm not looking forward to it Callion oh there's a run from Hernandez into space now is the opportunity Hernandez he comes back into Rebic one more to Haaland this is the opportunity oh is it the post it's just not going to happen is it it's not going to happen I cannot believe it there's no way he misses that usually and this is going to go to either penalties or Roma are going to win Camano now is finding space. Conte has committed forward. And he's struggling to catch back up with him here. It's away, but only as far as a midfielder. Thankfully, there's a defender there on call to block it. Oh, my word. He's going to go to penalties. I didn't even get an opportunity to make subs to bring penalty takers on. Damn it. Oh, so it all comes down to this. Some penalties on this game are hardly... Hardly, um, you know, on top of their game. That's for sure. If we look at this, we've... Wow, we are struggling for penalty takers. Mind you, so are they, to be fair. They're worse than us, but we are also in a bit of trouble. So, that's not great. That's not great at all. Uh, I might as well just keep it how it is, to be honest. And just hope for the best. Kessier, then. First penalty. What should we do? We're going to go bottom right corner here. We're going to tap it, and that's a nice penalty. Nicely neat taken, and it is 1-0. Justin Clivert now. Oh, that's a horrendous penalty from Clivert. Keeper went the wrong way, but it's okay. Haaland now with an opportunity. We're going to go bottom left this time. It's a little bit trickier, this one is. Oh, keeper saves it. Go right again, and Kamano scores that one. Not even getting a chance here to make my decision. Right, so with Tonali, we're going to go left again. We're going to hit it a bit more power into it this time. Keeper saves again. Oh, I'm not even getting a chance to make my decision here. They're taking it straight away. And it's all falling apart. It is all falling apart. We're going to go left again because the keeper's gone left the last two times. Rebic scores that one. Now Roma, Patrick Schick. Going to go right. There it is. 
saved and we're back on level terms. Kaleon with a brilliant opportunity now. We're going to go top right. This is probably not a wise idea because his penalties are so poor. Oh, keeper saves again. I mean, that went almost top corner and he still saves it. Donnarumma saves and we're into sudden death. Wow. And now it's Mandragora. We're going to go bottom right here. No point going top corner because it's just not going to happen. But he does. It works that time. Now Donnarumma versus Steven Enzonzi. Wow. What a moment this is. Can we somehow get this? Oh, he's missed. He's missed. Donnarumma goes the wrong way. But it doesn't matter because Stefan Enzonzi puts it out of off target altogether. And AC Milan scrape through into the semi-finals. What a great moment. It was such an intense game. But in all fairness, we are so unlucky to have even taken it this far. Because the amount of chances we had. Incredible clear-cut chances that we just did not put away. We were clearly the better side and to go through to penalties and lose would have been an injustice. But thankfully, we do it. The penalty saving was pretty poor that game. I'm usually better than that, to be honest with you. I'm not going to lie. But uh, thankfully, it didn't matter too much. We got a little bit of luck for the fact that Roma can't take penalties very well. But uh, it's deserved luck, for sure. Definitely deserved luck. And we are through to the semi-finals after a 3-2 win. Got to be absolutely delighted with that. So, back on to the main menu now, and that is it. I'm not sure the draw will have been in yet. Oh, yes, it will. It's Lazio in the semi-final. That's the first. Again, anyway, we'll have a second leg after that. So, I mean, look at this run. We've got Lazio twice within the space of four days, and then we've got Liverpool. So, that is certainly where we'll be dropping off in the next episode. We'll also have transfer deadline day as well. Sim the first three games, probably, and then we come in to these big guns here. So that is one I'm really looking forward to. Please do join me for what is going to be a blockbuster episode. The tough run is starting to come in and it's starting to set as well. We're going to have to bring a couple of signings in to increase the squad depth because they're going to be getting very tired, that is for sure. And next uh, episode, we will find out who we bring in. Be sure to let me know, by the way, if we should bring in Alejandro Gomez from uh, Atalanta. Definitely is a brilliant player for sure. We can more than afford him. It'll be around 20 million. Um, but the question is, do we want to do it? Is that realistic? Would he leave Atalanta? I'm leaving it down to you guys to let me know. And I know we are going to finish the episode off there, though. If you've enjoyed this one, please do leave a like. But most importantly, subscribe to the channel uh, for more regular gaming content and ring the bell so that you get notifications every time I upload. Don't forget to check out my other FIFA 20 series where we replicate all real systems and real tactics on FIFA 20 and also the odd videos here and there uh, based around the game as well. And on that note, we're going to finish it off there. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Come on.